behind us right now is the National Democratic Party building, which was burned on the day of anger, January uh, 28, 2011. I want this to always remind me and remind everybody that we did this. We took Mubarak down. We are capable of taking anybody else, including Morsi, including these planes. What I really want is for this building to never be rebuilt, to just stay burned like this, to be a reminder and a symbol for anybody who is going to rule Egypt to know that this could be their fate. July 3rd, 2013 was a historical day for Egypt. For the second time in under three years, the people had taken to the streets and taken down a president. The mood in Cairo was electric as millions of people gathered in Tahrir Square to celebrate the removal of President Mohamed Morsi of the Muslim Brotherhood. But I spent the night working with Operation Anti-Sexual Harassment, an activist group that fights mob sexual harassment and rape in Tahrir Square. There were 77 calls that night, 55 of which we were able to intervene. Throughout the celebration, I was running around from one case to the next to even be aware of what was happening to Morsi or the Muslim Brotherhood. And it turns out that this time around, the ousting is much more complicated. And it created a bloody rift among the people, those who wanted mostly out and those mostly Islamists who want the Muslim Brotherhood to stay in power. The next day, we took a tour to see the aftermath of the days that led to that night. We're standing here in front of the Muslim Brotherhood headquarters in Mu'attam where uh, protesters have raided this building on June 30th, uh, attacking it just much similar like the NDP party back in 2011. As you can see, it's completely demolished. It looks uh, pretty torn down. The protester had put a gas canister that exploded right in that door. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Sukana al-Mantaa? أنا أنا جيجي أنا سهلة زي حضرتك لا بارك فيك ممكن تقول لنا كنت موجود يوم ال آه كنت موجود بإذن الله اللي فوق ابتدوا اللي تحت ابتدوا يضربوا بأزايد وكلام من هذا القبيل واللي فوق ابتدوا إيه يحذفوا بقى أزايد صغيرة كده فما يتطار ويضربوا طلقات حية حوالي بتاع ثمان أفراد من هنا توف شوشل ده شباب حلو اللي ماشي هنا ده انا عارفه شخصيا سواق على ميكروباص ومعاه شهاده عليا خريج جامعه ومع ذلك توفى هنا واخد طلقه دخلت له من هنا طلعت من هنا. The bloodshed continued on the evening of July 2nd when the army fired into a crowd of Muslim Brotherhood supporters killing several. The relatives of one of the Salafis who was killed that night allowed us to attend his funeral. أحمد كان على المنصة بيهدف ما فيش سلاح ما فيش أي ما يدعو للتعدي عليه أحمد خد الكناب المسيلة دموع نزل من على المنصة طبعا زي أي حد بيترقى الكناب المسيلة ما بيستحملش نزل من على المنصة بص ناحية الناس اللي بتضرب الكناب اللي هي الشرطة يعني بيقول لهم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل راح جات له رصاصة من آلي دخلت من صدره وطلعت من بطنه أحمد عبد الحميد كل اللي عمله اللي هو واقف قدام الشرطة وقال لهم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل بس Many at the funeral felt that the country was sliding into a dangerous military control as the president stepped down and the anti-military sentiment was swelling. I mean, we're on a brink of civil war, 
uh, between people who think they are fighting for Islam and those who are fighting for the revolution. Uh, Salafis, revolutionaries, Muslim Brotherhood, independence, uh, liberals, socialists, I mean, we at some point in the revolution have fought all together side by side. When now we're on different sides and people are killed, of course I'm gonna sympathize and of course I'm gonna be sorry for anybody who lost anyone in this fight. As the week wore on across Egypt, tensions grew. On July 5th, Morsi supporters rallied outside the military compound for what started as a peaceful protest demanding the president's reinstatement. But as the military tried to disperse the crowd, things got violent fast. The army shot into the crowd, killing four and injuring many others. In response to the killings, the protesters threatened to march onto the fair square. The one who's responsible and the only one who's responsible uh, is Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood leaders who invited them to this sectarian strike. Acting on rumors that the Muslim Brotherhood would be marching on the square, the military moved in the tanks to secure access points. As night fell, the pro Morsi supporters did attack, throwing rocks, Molotov cocktails, and even firing shotguns and clashing posts. As violence spiraled out of control, the soldiers everyone was cheering earlier were nowhere to be seen. Vice correspondent Eris Rosinos was there firsthand. It's automatic rifle fire popping now. People are getting down, getting down for cover. Fuck, that's close. Get down! The next morning, we went to the city morgue to see the fallout and hear from the families of some of those who were killed in the previous night's violence. At the time we were there, all the victims of the families were from the anti-Morsi camp. During the battle, we saw both sides firing at each other, but as each side buried their dead, both saw themselves as the victims. أنا وقت خرطوش في جسمي بسبب وقت صاحبي أنا حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل يعني أنا أسلحه وهم معهم أسلحة غريبة أسلحة غريبة معاهم بيبعودونا في الدغنة في الناس اللي الناس الناس اللي جوه كلهم مضروبين في دماغهم ده جاي من شغله ده جاي من شغله اسمه محمود أحمد علي وسنه 30 سنة وخمراوي وجاي من شغله وبيكلم خطيبته في التليفون التليفون وقع منه كان من على الجامع فوق من على الجامع كان خرجت مخه خالص جامع صلاح الدين Through my time as a revolutionary, it's always been us versus the state. What troubles me is now it looks like us versus each other, and the revolution has yet to provide a clear alternative to power.